Hello, you're watching Telecom TV Summit on Private 5G and The Edge. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm delighted to say that joining me on the programme today is Juan Carlos Garcia, Senior Vice President of Technology and Ecosystem at Telefonica. Juan Carlos, very good to speak with you again. Thanks so much for joining us on the programme. Now, currently, we're seeing a number of high-profile private 5G networks, either in trials or commercial deployment, but most of these seem to be with large enterprises, very large ones, such as ports, airports, factories. This doesn't sound like a viable business model for telcos. Does this show that perhaps our current approach could be flawed? Well, that's, that's a great question to start, no? Um... And it is true no, that the current uh, private 5G networks are addressing very large enterprises that can afford paying for a dedicated infrastructure and services. But I would not say it's not viable or sustainable business model. So in general, it is a good business, but it is not a scalable. That is, cannot be delivered to the long tail of enterprise customers. That is, enterprises that are not so large, medium, small, that are the vast majority of enterprises. No? A dedicated uh, private 5G network requires delivering and operating physical appliances on premises, uh, design and deploy a special project, and in general, a dedicated team to support the customer. And this is something smaller enterprises cannot afford. So the current model is viable, but when it, when it comes to scale, we might need to, to rethink our approach then. So if, if telcos do need to rethink their, their approach and to scale up to support many more business customers, what is the alternative? What is it they should do? Well, um, telecom operators will have to evolve uh, the current solution in two directions. So on one side, uh, serving most of the solution from the network, that is from the edge of the telecom operator, reducing deployment and operation effort at the customer premises, and second, doing it in a way that is as self-service as possible, delivering network capacity as computing capacity is delivered today, that is, as a service, no? reducing the required customer support. We need to start thinking seriously uh, on network as a service, or in this case, private network as a service. So are you saying that perhaps we need to move away from talking about and looking at dedicated physical private networks with all the installation and on-site support requirements and, and move more towards, as you were saying, software-delivered private 5G services that are deployed by telco edge installations? Well, absolutely. Uh, the public network is mostly deployed at the edge, close to the customer. So most of the assets of telecom operators are at the edge today. And this is a perfect place to deliver networking solutions to our customers that are mission critical and latency sensitive. The current technology, especially the 5G standalone core, that is the first uh, cloud native radio technology, allows you to create a full network by software in a few minutes or hours without requiring a physical installation. So this can be done automatically and scaled up and down as needed. Uh, also, the new uh, cloud run can also be delivered by software and operated remotely in the, at least in the baseband processing part. So you can do a lot of things uh, remotely from the uh, from the network edge. And of course, you will have always to uh, to, to, to have some uh, um, physical elements to be installed on the customer premises, for instance, the antennas for indoor environments. But the rest of the network elements can be perfectly hosted in a central office close to the customer, a software running on telco servers. So we've got a, a cloud native approach that we're, we're leveraging and using here. And we're also talking as an industry um, about creating more access and, and um, developing APIs and more specific APIs for this, this purpose. Um, and we heard only a few months ago from the, the GSMA, for example, uh, of an initiative to, to create industry-wide APIs here um, to, to help enable these services and, and get developers on board. Is the... Um, is there a problem here that if you do create an industry-wide approach to APIs, you actually prevent service differentiation? Well, it's, it's, it's not so like that. Um, uh, when we talk about basic networking capabilities, uh, the customer want to have the same solution wherever they have their facilities so that they can design and develop a solution once and deploy it many times. 
The differentiation will come from the service level, the support, or the solutions that operators offer on top. Uh, but at basic functionality level, uh, we need the standards. Uh, that will incentivize not just operators, but also system integrators and solution developers to use the APIs in their applications and consume networking capacity because they know those uh, applications uh, will work anywhere in any network. No? Um, and uh, think, for instance, about voice messaging and internet access. No? Operators in, in, in these uh, traditional services provide the same service, but they still are able to compete no? and differentiate. But differentiation comes from pricing, from performance, from value of the services that you build on top. Okay, And, and it will be the same thing uh, when we talk about uh, networking services for private networks. Okay, so we could have a, a tiered uh, approach here. Um, it feels, though, uh, Juan Carlos, that we've been talking about this for, for quite some time, and, and telecoms really still lacks this strong relationship with app developers, especially enterprise app developers. Why do you believe the GSMA's Open Gateway Initiative could be the key to unlocking this potential? Well, um, definitely, uh, GSMA's Open Gateway is going to trigger a massive change in this direction, no? in, the, in the relationship of telecom operators with the uh, application developers uh, to develop new solutions uh, and will open new opportunities for these developers and, and also for other partners. No? But uh, it is not the first initiative that GSMA puts into practice to take cloud practices uh, uh, to the telco industry. No? Three years ago, for example, in February 2020, the GSMA launched Operator Platform a Group with the intention to define how the network is going to evolve towards a digital service platform. In January 2021, Linux Foundation launched Anuket in collaboration also with the GSMA to define standardized reference infrastructure specifications to harmonize the telco cloud infrastructure. In February 2022, one year ago, the Camera project was launched to define the APIs that will be used to expose network capabilities to application developers in an easy to consume, easy, easy to use way, no, as a service. Again, as a collaboration of the GSMA and Linux Foundation. Uh, some months later, in April 2022, Linux Foundation starts the MIFIO project with leader, leadership of Google uh, to develop a set of automation tools for the telco cloud environments. And finally, in November 2022, Linux Foundation Europe launched uh, its first project, Silva, to develop a reference implementation of a telco cloud uh, software stack uh, based on Kubernetes, uh, also as a collaboration of telecom operators with open source communities. Uh, and finally, and in, in parallel, TM Forum has been working uh, over the last years to define the open digital architecture to face the new digital service era and, and has extensively worked on open APIs for IT systems. So there is a lot of previous work really uh, of the telecom community with the communities of developers that has made possible that now 22 operators signed this open uh, gateway agreement to uh, jointly launch network API services this year, 2023. So I, I, as you were explaining there, there's a, a, a lot of history. Here. A lot of work has been going on for a number of years to get us to this point where, where we're able to, or the GSMA is enabled to, to announce this, this latest initiative and, and put more emphasis on the APIs. But what's the ultimate objective here? Are we looking less at private 5G networks and more at private 5G services? Or, or are we talking about a future private 5G as a service approach? Well, that's, that's a very good point. No? Um, really, it makes little sense that we try to convince our enterprise customers to take their computing infrastructure to the cloud and consume it as a service. And in this same digital area, we ask them to work in the networking side in the opposite direction. That is asking them to have a dedicated infrastructure on their premises for networking. We, if we need, want to be consistent and coherent, uh, network services should evolve to digital services. And it will make a lot of sense that we serve these uh, services from the telco edge or cloud as private 5G as a service services. Telephonic is already moving in this direction. And, and in that way, we are orienting uh, probably our, uh, our evolution on, on, on private networks to the future. Juan Carlos, we must leave it there. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Absolutely fascinating. And uh, we've got a lot of mileage in this area yet. So we look forward to seeing how this sector develops. Thank you.
has been a pleasure. Thank you, Guy.